2 Peter chapter 3 describes thermonuclear war in the end times. I'm going to read it. I'm going to skip through. Get your Bible out. You read through it. Get the King James, the NIV, the New King James, the New American Standard, the American Standard. Get them all. And read them all. Compare verses. Here's what it says. In the end days, he talks about <clears throat> In the last days, scoffers will come. Following their own evil desires, they will say, Where is this coming, he promised. But then look what it says. Later in the chapter. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear. Or Actually, I should go back. It talks about how the same word present, heavens and earth are, preserved, are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. So the hour of God's judgment is for the destruction of ungodly men. God's people... The Bible says that the bride is, or that the woman clo is clothed with the sun in Revelation chapter 12. That means that's thermonuclear fusion, fission. She's clothed with nuclear fission. She doesn't have to worry about nuclear war. She clothes her, she'll clothe herself in that mushroom cloud. But. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. That's the sky rolls up like a scroll. That's the sign in the sky of the coming of the Son of Man. That's your thermonuclear mushroom cloud. The sky, the heavens will disappear with a roar. And the elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. That's your hour of God's judgment. That's your trial that's... That's your hour of trial to come upon the whole earth. That's your hour that Babylon the Great falls and the hour that the beast, Antichrist system, comes to power. Since everything, verse 11, since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. You're not pushing back that God's coming. You're speeding his coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. That is a nuclear strike. That is the day of judgment. The hour of God's judgment from Revelation chapter 14 verse 7. Folks, even Peter talks about the hour of God's judgment and clearly describes the sky being burned with fire and the elements melting in the heat. That's a nuclear bomb, folks. That's that's the end days. That's what Kim Jong-un and Putin and Jinping are all about. That's what they want to do. They want to take over the world. That's why That's why uh, Kim Jong-un so desperately is seeking to get nuclear power. And same with Iran. They just want nukes. So they'll have that kind of power in their grasp. And the day of the Lord, the day, the hour of God's judgment is coming. And uh, the ungodly will be destroyed. Amen. Praise God. Jesus is Lord. Time's running out. Get your heart right with God. You can disagree with me all you want. But after World War III, for those who survive, we who are alive and remain will have to remain faithful to Jesus because the mark of the beast is going to come out because the Antichrist, the beast and the Antichrist government wins World War III and brings out the mark of the beast. And the rapture still hasn't happened yet. I disagree with you. I think that before any of this happens, the rapture is going to happen. Folks, if, if the rapture was going to happen, it better happen like in the next, before World War III. Because if when World War III happens, you'll know, and the rapture still hasn't happened yet, you'll know that the next thing to happen is going to be the mark of the beast comes out, and you can debate it all you want.
Go ahead, debate it. We, let's debate. Let's disagree. But when it happens, you can't make God rapture you. And he's going to do it exactly as is written in his word. And his word says that Babylon the Great falls, then the mark of the beast comes out, then there's great persecution, and and uh, this calls for patient endurance for those who remain faithful. Then the number is complete of those who are to be put to death for their faith. Once that number is complete, then the harvest of the earth, rapture, which is primarily about the dead in Christ rising, it's the resurrection of the dead, first and foremost. That's why it says the dead in Christ rise first, because those are the ones... It's not about saving some people who, who just don't want to go through hardship or trial. Well, I don't want to have to shed my blood. There's people who have never shed their blood for their faith. Paul even said, you have, any, you have not yet resisted sin so much as to shed your own blood. And North American Christians all expect the rapture to happen. And it's not going to happen. The mark of the beast is going to come out. And they're going to end up taking the mark of the beast because they thought the rapture was going to ha supposed to happen. The reason they thought because they loved not the truth, delighted in wickedness, and they were no longer willing to bear uh, or to, uh, they're no longer willing to endure sound teaching. And sound teaching is this. World War III happens. Then the mark of the beast comes out. Then in the middle of a heavy persecution, the rapture. There's some other people out there saying, oh, there's another rapture, and then another rapture, and then there's the tribulation saints, and then there's another rapture. Like there's a hundred different raptures. Man. And then they're going to stand there and tell you Revelation 3.10 represents the rapture. It doesn't say that. Why don't you choose Revelation 2.10? Out of their seven churches, why do you have to choose Revelation 3.10, why couldn't you choose a different one of, the, one of the other churches? God has a different word for each church. Just saying. Get ready. 